In this video, we will talk about sequences. A sequence is an ordered list of elements, so the order is important here because essentially we're going to be looking for some sort of pattern. An ordered list of elements created by a function that maps the integers to a set S. So we don't know what's in S, but we get the idea. Um, the notation is that A sub N would represent the nth term. So for example, if I had um, a to the n, or a sub n equals 2n, then a sub 0 would be 0. a sub 1 would be 2 times 1, which is 2. Sorry, this should have been 2 times 0, which is 0. a 2 would be 2 times 2, which is 4 etc, etc, etc. So if I were finding this set, I would say 0, 2, 4, 6, blah, 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 on to forever. There are two types of sequences that we will focus on, and that is the arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence. An arithmetic sequence essentially just tells us that we're adding some term called the common difference, D, to our initial term of A, to find the next term. So this is a, this is a plus d. I'm going to add another d. So notice this is a plus 2d. I'm going to add another d and that's a plus 3d. I'm going to add another d and I'm going to continue that process until whatever my final term is of the sequence. So let's take a look at two examples, opposites of one another. The first one says, let a equal 5 and d equal 2 find the first five terms. So the first term is 5 because they told me it was. To find every subsequent term, all I'm going to do is add the common difference of 2. So 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 plus 2 is 13 etc, etc. So the first five terms are 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. The second question is the opposite of that. It's saying, here's the sequence. Can you tell me what A is and can you tell me what D is? So here I've got 7, 4, 1, negative 2, etc, etc. So A is a give me, right? Because we know our first term is A and our first term is 7. Then all I have to do is look at the fact that I subtracted 3, and I subtracted 3, and then I subtracted 3, etc., etc., which means D must be negative 3. So I'm adding a negative 3 each time to get to my next term. The other sequence we will look at is the geometric sequence, and the geometric sequence is essentially formed by multiplying the initial term by the common ratio. Um, so again, notice from here to here, I've multiplied by R. From here to here, I've multiplied that value by R. From here to here, I've multiplied that value by R, and you get the pattern. So to write that a little easier, it's A, to, a times R, A times R squared, A times R to the third, etc. But if I'm just writing out the numbers, such as question number one that says, hey, let's start at four and then use a ratio of 3, the common ratio of 3, means 4 times 3 is 12. And then instead of going back to 4 and taking 4 times 3 times 2, I'm just going to take 12 times 3, which is 36. And then I'm going to take 36 times 3 to get 108. And then I'm going to take 108 times 3 to get 324. Uh, is that five? Yes, one, two, three, four, five. So again, you can continue as many times as you want, but I was asked to find five, and therefore there is my five, or there are my five, I guess. Um, the second one is saying find A and R, and again, A, I don't have to do any thought to find. A is three because A is the first term. The question is what is R? So what is the ratio so to get from 3 to 3 halves, it looks like I divided by 2. Uh, the problem with that, though, is remember with a common ratio, we're looking at what did we multiply by. So instead of saying dividing by 2, 
I'm going to say I multiplied by one half. And then I wanted to just check it and make sure. Three halves times one half, does that give me three fourths? Yes, it does. Three fourths times one half, does that give me three eighths? Yes, it does. And so my common ratio is one half.